Cannon produced other people who claimed to have worked for Eddie Blundell. In a clandestine meeting, one of them agreed to let me tape an interview with her, provided we didn't reveal her identity. She told of the grip Eddie Blundell had on his workers. You never really get out of debt with them because you get fined on silly things. Like if you're late at the yard, you know, to pick your trolley up, you're fined. If you lose a scoop, you're fined. If you run out of ice cream, you're fined. Because you're not supposed to do any of these things, you know. This is, if you know someone else is called in on a pitch and they're not supposed to be there, and you don't inform them at all, because you're supposed to get out and get on the phone and let them know that someone else is there. We decided to try to check whether Cannon's story was true. There seemed only one way to find out what really happened when you set up in competition with Eddie Blundell. Posing as a rival trader, I was secretly filmed pitching on Blundell territory. On Cannon's advice, we chose the pitch outside the Tower of London. We only had to wait about 20 minutes before something happened. What's your game, pal? Pardon? What's your fucking game? What game? You know this is Eddie's pitch. Oh, oh. Right, if you're fucking working here tomorrow, all right, all right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I promise. You're going to get well fucking all right, I'll go. I'm sorry, I'll go. Yeah, you're I... fucking sold now, you've got your watch. So transfixed had I been by the gentleman on the right that I hadn't noticed what his friend was up to. He'd been busy pouring a can of motor oil into my vanilla ice cream. Everything Cannon had predicted had happened. But later, when we'd had time to consider it, we became suspicious about the incident. It had all happened a little too smoothly. Our suspicion was increased when, without Cannon knowing, we repeated the operation and nothing remotely comparable happened. We began to wonder whether somebody was setting us up. We told Cannon about our worries. He seemed to become edgy, and on the day that Eddie Blundell was arrested, Cannon broke off all contact with us. We've since learned that the police believe that we nearly became the victims of an ingenious plan to get Eddie Blundell off the charges he knew he would have to face. The theory was that the Tower Hill incident had all been stage managed by Joe Cannon on behalf of Eddie Blundell. The aim was to get us to include it in a programme about Blundell's ice cream business. If he was arrested, we would be able to prove that the incident was a setup devised to discredit him. This would cast a shadow of doubt over all the other genuine incidents on which the police had gathered evidence against him. We've tried to establish whether the police's theory about this elaborate plan is correct. We soon discovered that Joe Cannon hadn't been exactly straight with us. At least one of the people he'd introduced us to, who claimed to have worked for Eddie Blundell, had been lying. In a sworn statement to the police, she's since admitted that Cannon had told her what to say to us. If he'd done this, he might well have been prepared to stage manage the Tower Hill incident. This photograph shows that Cannon was indeed on friendly terms with the Blundell brothers. Eddie's standing behind Billy on the far right. Did your brother ever employ a man called Joseph Cannon? Um, he did employ him for a short time, just to um, help round the yard and whatnot. That's about all, to uh, mainly to service vans and clean them when they came back from work and whatnot. He wasn't employed as a heavy? No. no. He was never employed as a heavy. He's, he's too old to be a heavy, Joe Cannon. He's an old man. He's got no teeth and a bald head. You know, he'd probably laugh people to death. We recently made contact again with Joe Cannon. We were anxious to put to him the theory that he'd staged the Tower Hill incident as a way of getting Eddie Blundell off. He agreed to do a second interview with us. It's been alleged to us that the incident involving me at Tower Hill Tube Station was stage managed by you on behalf of Eddie Blundell. No, definitely not. Not true. No. That was as much as Joe Cannon was prepared to say. Hello. Put him through. Frank Campion is Eddie Hello. Blundell's solicitor. Hello, we showed him our film of the yeah. incident at Tower Hill and asked him what he made of it. Okay. I know. I think the incident was a prefabrication. Do you have any evidence to prove that? Yes, I have a tape recording which was made between Eddie Blundell and a man called Joe Cannon, where Joe Cannon admits that the incident was a prefabrication uh, 
to fall on the weekend television. The police have a theory that Joseph Cannon all along was working on behalf of Eddie. I can see why the police would say that. I don't think it's correct. He wasn't working for Eddie. Oh, no, he wasn't working for Eddie. The tape recording Mr. Campion was talking about was made by Eddie Blundell of a long phone call made to Blundell by Joe Cannon on the 16th of October, 1980, 11 days after the Tower Hill incident. In it, Cannon admits that he did stage the incident and that the two heavies we filmed, unknown to us at the time, had worked for him before. Anyway, the two heavies I've got who've done that, Ed, yeah. right, they work, you know, they, 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 uh, they've done some work for me. Yeah, but the what I don't understand, Joe, is, I mean, all right, they've took down that, and I mean, how can that be presented? It can't be presented as if it's being my heavies, can it? No, they want to present it, but they don't know it's a get-up. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. They think it's your heavies. Gotcha. You see what I mean? Yeah. I've done that on my own back. Yeah. They think, they actually think that they are your heavies. So if they present that, got well, they present that, you want them to present that, that's your bloody hell. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, that's because this is your only outlet. This is, this is what I've told Peppy to tell you. The two kids come from North London. They two of them, they work for me down the pop place. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, I've done that deliberately. So you, so you, so like, that is your only real, sort of, you know, and I'd be willing to stand up and say, I, 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 I set that up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if I can prove outwardly that one part of that program is completely utter rubbish, yeah. it flings all the other others out. It's clear, then, that the incident we filmed on this spot 15 months ago was stage managed by Joe Cannon in order to help Eddie Blundell get off the charges he would soon have to face. But rather than the plan being devised by Eddie, it was Cannon's way, it appears, of doing his former boss an unsolicited favour. The plan came unstuck because the police arrested Blundell before we were able to put out our original programme. The rest is history.